<laughs> Mary Lee is trying to compete. Why do you laugh? Have you seen their car? I have seen their car. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they have a great product. These cars embodied all the worst aspects of the Chinese automotive industry. Shameless imitation of well-known models, low build quality, the smell of plastic in the cabin, and poor handling. And who else but the king of electric cars, Elon Musk, laughed at them and claimed they had no chance of success. <laughs> trying to compete. However, by 2024, Elon Musk is not laughing. BYD is breaking record after record, claiming the title of the largest electric car manufacturer, surpassing the revolutionary Tesla. But how did this happen? This is the story of BYD. Doesn't it sound like a fairy tale of our time? An orphan born in one of the poorest areas of China becomes a billionaire and the founder of a leading global electric car manufacturer. Wang Chuanfu was born in 1966 in the Chinese province of Anhui in an ordinary peasant's family. He was the seventh of eight children. His parents died when he was in school. His brothers and sisters dropped out of school and went to work to support the family. But not Wang. He became the family's hope to escape the peasant life. Wang excelled in school and received a scholarship to study chemistry at the South Central University for Nationalities. He became the only student from a rural school to enter university and a local celebrity. By the way, not far from this university are the mountains of Huangshan. The landscape of Pandora from Avatar is depicted from them. But Wang has never been there. Before because there was no money, and now because there is no time. In 1987, Wang entered the graduate school of the Beijing Institute of non ferrous Metals and then stayed there to work in the field of batteries and battery specialization. After working there for several years, 29-year-old Xuan Fu decided to move on and moved south to Shenzhen. In 1979, the Chinese government decided to conduct a capitalist experiment here, organized a special economic zone, and the tiny village with a population of only 30,000 people, yes, by Chinese standards this is only, gradually turned into a 17 million metropolis, which many call the Chinese Silicon Valley. It was in Shenzhen that giants were born – Huawei, Tencent, ZTE, DJI. In 1995, Wang borrowed $300,000 from acquaintances and together with his cousin Xiao Yan founded his own battery manufacturer, BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams. Although later smiling, Wang said that the name comes from Bring Your Dollars. So, in 1995, Wang granted a workshop, hired 20 employees and began producing batteries for phones and other gadgets. But don't expect a story here about ingenious know-how. The company he created, BYD, went the route of reverse engineering. Or simply put, coping. The team disassembled Japanese batteries, studied how they were made, made some improvements and produced their versions, which turned out to be more affordable than analogs, not due to some miraculous reasons, but because of cheap labor. After all, yesterday's peasants needed jobs. There wasn't enough money for a Japanese automated assembly line either. However, Wang himself assembled a semi-automatic one from drawings, but the capacity was clearly insufficient. Nevertheless, the small company began producing 4,000 batteries daily. By 2000, BYD became the largest manufacturer of batteries for mobile phones and laptops in the world. Among its clients were Motorola, Nokia, Sony Ericsson, Dell, Samsung and more. The technical specifications of its products were on par with renowned competitors. Japanese Sony and American Sanyo filed several lawsuits, vainly trying to accuse BYD of stealing know-how. Still, Wang managed to fend them off, stating, Our made in China differs from other made in China. Manufactured in China can be better than products from other countries. In 2002, BYD successfully went public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. A year later, its shares sharply declined. Unexpectedly for investors, Wang decided to add a new business car manufacturing. In 2003, he bought 77% of the shares of the struggling car factory Quinchuan Machinery Works from the government for a symbolic amount. The factory produced a single model, a small hatchback called Flyer, which externally resembled Hyundai Atas, and borrowed its platform from Suzuki Alto. The model wasn't in high demand. 
Investors simply didn't understand why Wang needed such a headache. In three days, BYD shares lost 31%. But Wang didn't stop, and in 2005, he made some improvements to the car and officially added his brand name to the model, resulting in BYD Flyer. As expected, it didn't affect sales. However, new models took off. Which ones? In creating cars, Wang Xuanfu followed the same path as with batteries. He studied other models and made his own versions. There is a legend within the company that one day Chuan Fu drove up to the factory gates in a brand new Mercedes Benz S Class and told the workers, Take it apart down to the last screw and see how it's all put together. And to make sure they didn't hold back, he took a key and made a big scratch on the car right in front of him. This is how a whole family of models was born, which became a symbol of Chinese audacity for the whole world. In 2005, the BYD F3 sedan went on sale, which could easily be mistaken for a Toyota Corolla. Priced at $8,750, the car quickly conquered the country, selling 100,000 units in a year, and a few years later the F3 became China's best-selling car. The BYD F0 hatchback, released in 2008, strongly resembled the Toyota Aigo. The BYD S8 convertible looked just like the Mercedes-Benz CLK class from the front. The M6 minivan was identical to the Toyota Sienna, and the BYD S6 crossover was reminiscent of the Lexus RX. The engines that powered all of those vehicles especially resembled Mitsubishi engines, but they were not identical. Apparently, the engineers weren't just coping they were improving. However, customers weren't bothered by such imitation. BYD cars were much more affordable and of better quality than those of many Chinese competitors. And now consider this. In 2008, when there was no talk of an electric revolution yet and Tesla was only known as a quirky manufacturer of battery-powered Lotus LEs, BYD released the world's first mass-produced plug-in hybrid, the F3DM. It was equipped with solar panels on the roof, a battery, and two electric motors. All of this allowed the car to travel up to 60 kilometers on pure electricity. And if it ran out, a gasoline engine would come to the rescue. However, the Chinese were reluctant to buy this car for $21,900, even though it was cheaper than the Toyota Prius and Chevrolet Volt. In a year, they were only able to sell 48 units, and by 2013, when production ended, the total production didn't even reach 3,500. Nevertheless, BYD still sent their cars to the USA, where the housing authority of the city of Los Angeles, HACLA, leased 10 F3DMs for $400 a month for one year. Joyful BYD opened their headquarters there, and even the then-governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, attended the opening. But in the end, car sales were postponed due to the lack of charging infrastructure. The results were not much better in Europe, where in Spain, they were only able to sell 8 cars for 35000 each. But even more outlandish were Wang Chuanfu's statements that soon his company would become the leader in the electric car market, which undoubtedly holds the future. At the end of 2008, BYD caught the attention of the whole world. The American newspaper The Wall Street Journal reported that during a factory tour, Xuan Fu took a sip of battery fluid to impress investors and prove how clean his batteries were. Why? That year, the company's shares caught the eye of the legend, investor Warren Buffett, who stated, We've gotta buy BYD. This guy runs it better than Thomas Edison. Soon he bought about 225 million BYD shares for $232 million, which was 10% of all shares. Jumping ahead, his bet paid off handsomely. The shares skyrocketed in value. Buffett bought them for $1 each and sold them for $30 each. As a result, the investor made $1.3 billion, and he still holds more than half of the purchased BYD shares in his portfolio. By the way, there are no Teslas in this coveted portfolio because their shares fluctuate unpredictably. In 2008, Wang entered the annual list of China's richest people with a fortune of $5.8 billion. Fast forward to now, his fortune is $14 billion. 
by the end of the 2000s, the trend for eco-friendly transportation was gaining momentum, and the Chinese government was concerned about the smog problem over cities and was ready to purchase electric transport. And then, in 2009, BYD released its first electric bus. To date, more than 65,000 units have been delivered worldwide. Cheap labor remained a competitive advantage for BYD. The company employed 10,000 engineers, half of whom worked in the automotive business. According to Wang, every year Chinese universities produce 5 million graduates, which is more than the population of some European countries. They are willing to work for much lower wages than their American or Japanese counterparts. Such a large number of engineers ensures technical progress. In 2009, BYD received billions in Chinese subsidies and various assistance to develop production of low or zero emission electric vehicles, and from 2010, BYD was selling half a million cars a year at prices ranging from $13,200 to $46,700, while the cheapest Tesla in China was selling for $46,000. It was the competition with BYD that forced Musk to significantly lower prices several times. However, the Chinese continued to increase their pace and manipulate an even more budget-friendly price. In 2013, BYD started moving away from copying other cars. The first cars with original designs were the Dynasty series, where models were named after dynasties. The hybrid sedan Chin, SUV named Tang, and Song. In 2015, Wang had another ambitious project – urban light rail transport, which in his opinion could solve the problems of traffic jams and air pollution. Hmm, Musk had something similar. The SkyRail project was well received in many cities in China, and construction of monorails began in some. However, after the 2016 law tightening railway construction norms, it was shut down, and the projects are currently on hold. If one can judge by Chuan Fu's character, it won't be forever. In 2019, BYD and Toyota announced the creation of a joint venture to produce Toyota electric vehicles for the Chinese market. What a twist! Not long ago, BYD was coping Toyota's cars, and now the Japanese automotive giant wants to officially work with them. In the same years, BYD involved employees from major design studios in developing the brand. Chief designers from Audi, Sayat, and Alfa Romero, the head of exterior design at Ferrari, and the leading interior designer from Mercedes-Benz. However, this didn't reflect on sales, which hovered around 4-500 thousand units annually until 2020. The breakthrough came in 2021, when 730,000 cars were delivered. This is when the Han sedan was introduced, directly competing with the Tesla Model 3. It sold 100,000 units within a year. In 2022, BYD also became the global leader in lithium-iron phosphate batteries, holding a market share of 41.1%. The significant achievement was that BYD was the only company globally producing electric vehicles through the entire cycle, creating all components. In contrast, Tesla, for example, sources batteries from third-party suppliers. In spring 2022, BYD completely abandoned petrol cars, leaving only hybrids and electric cars in the lineup. In mid-2023, the company sold a total of 431,000 electric cars. For comparison, Tesla sold 435,000 cars during the same period. BYD started calling itself the largest automotive brand you've never heard of. Journalists claim that due to its growing popularity, the company would soon need a new slogan. And that moment arrived. BYD displaces Tesla from the top spot as the world's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, selling 3 million cars, while the American competitor sold 1.84 million. However, there's a bit of deception in this sensational result. Chinese statistics include plug-in hybrids, which make up about half of the total production. So, in terms of pure electric vehicles, Tesla still leads by a considerable margin – 1.5 million BYD versus 1.8 million Tesla. Moreover, BYD's market capitalization is currently around $71 billion, which is only about a tenth of Tesla's market capitalization – $636 billion. However, observing BYD overtaking Tesla in the electric vehicle race might not bring a festive mood to Elon Musk, but perhaps he should be grateful that the Chinese company is only selling electric buses in America, not its cars, which currently roam the roads of Asia and Europe. At least for now. 
in January 2024, BYD began looking for a site to build an auto plant in Mexico. Mexico could be an ideal starting point for Chinese automakers to enter the US market due to the relatively low labor costs and the opportunity to benefit from a 2.5% tariff instead of the 27.5% imposed on China. Well, considering BYD's growth rate, in 2024 the Chinese manufacturer might secure genuine supremacy in the battle for the electric vehicle throne. And all you have to do is hit like and subscribe to our channel, so we can continue to delight you with excellent content.